are always depressing, especially mine. Hey, Anna? Yes? Can we scratch the basic black? I want to be effervescent. Silver, the sequins, midriff. You know the one I'm talking about. Yes, Miss McBride. I need more glitter on my eyes. Oh, Frizz, can you put more juice on my lips? I can't even stand to look at myself without the juice. Miss McBride, I was wondering if I could uh, talk to you about something important. Maggie. Right, Maggie. And what's so important, Maggie? Um, I'm having a baby. <laughs> I was, I would really love it if you could be the, the baby's godmother. Yeah. How did you know? Just a hunch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where's Diane? Where's Diane? So is it a boy or a girl? It's a girl. What are you gonna name her? Sloan. <laughs> you shouldn't. <laughs> no, I mean, you really shouldn't. I'm sorry, I'm late. My car stalled. I tell you, Diane, I have this mechanic in the valley. He's very yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, later, okay? So how's everything going? The teacher's running a little late. Oh, he's your guy. If you can't get him here in 10 minutes, you gotta find somebody else. And one of the servers does not show. But I did get the last minute replacement. Oh, no. No, no, We're supposed to place the sushi in a tight inward spiral. Good. Well, at least you have good supervision. Actually, she's the replacement. Oh, that's good. Great. You're doing great. Whatever. Oh, these are lovely. Oh, my dear. Diane, thank God. It's the new girl, Maggie. Thanks, Maggie. Wait downstairs, okay? Uh, but I think I should... Now, please. I just heard. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Let's see. This week, the chick who grooms George asked me to be a witness at her wedding, and the hot tub guy asked me for cash to save his dying aunt. It won't happen again. I told you, Diane, you have to deal with these people. I will. I just haven't had a chance. Look, they pushed up my album's release date, and they've half my studio time. You find an assistant. I don't have time for this kind of crap. OK. Can you put my necklace on, please? You look amazing. You always say that. <laughs> oh, I think we're forgetting about Grammy night. The chainmail moo moo was a little over the top, but it got me loads of press. You truly are one of a kind. You're not wrong. 40 my ass. Mm-mm-mm. Bring you into, shall we say, maintain the label status quo. Her last few releases didn't do Britney or Christina's numbers, but Sloane has a fiercely loyal fan base. I'm really glad. Uh, Thank you. Great. Ooh, she looks great. Beautiful. Oh, she looks fantastic. Mira, don't believe a word he says. <laughs> Sloane, I'm so glad you came here. So thoughtful of you to invite me. I love that you told everyone else to come casual. Mm -hmm. It's so Sloane McBride. You know, you should call and catch up. It's been forever. No. Now that you're whining and dining me, maybe I will. I'd love that. Excellent. Let's celebrate, shall we? Where's the Blanc Perrier? Um, I, I don't know. Mira, there are some fabulous people I want you to meet. Hey! Where's Diane? Hi. 
Diane, tell me, where's the 90 grand siècle? I had it flown in from Laurent Perrier last week. Well, it should be in the kitchen. But I'll go check. Excuse me. I think I saw that champagne she was talking about downstairs. Well, it should be here. You know, I brought it up myself, even labeled the thing, served this first. Show me. Where is she? Sloan will be here in a minute. Now, don't forget to pout, but smile. I can't pout and smile, Gavin. Well, Brittany, do you want to go back to being a substitute cheerleader? No. Okay, I'll do it. Sloan, come and meet your latest disciple. Who is this lovely little thing? My newest client. Sloane, I'd like you to meet Tara Quinn. Sloane McBride. <laughs> this is awesome. I have been listening to your music since I was like 10. <laughs> wow, and now you're like 12? I'm 18. <laughs> you probably hear this all the time, but your first song, Slow Burn, it totally changed my life. That makes the two of us. Oh my god, that, that, that makes you great. I, excuse me. I guess Macy totally changed her life too. You know, half the people who are SVP'd aren't here. This isn't the only gig in town. Alicia Keys is having tea for 1200 at Moomba. <laughs> so what, that makes my party like adult contemporary counter-programming? Pomgo moved a million units this month. Don't blame your friends for wanting to taste her finger sandwiches. Screw them. Is this what you're looking for? What the? Yes! Oh, yes! Let's go. Sloan! Happy birthday! Thanks for coming. Mm. LAX was a nightmare. How was Maui? It was great. All three days. Well, them's the breaks. But we are definitely counting on you, man. Gavin! <laughs> Todd! <laughs> Excuse me. He was actually trying to push one of his boys on me. I told him I've only gone platinum when you've been my producer, Jay. Worked like a charm. Well, you always get your way, don't you, Sloan? <laughs> Can we catch up a little bit later? Sure. That's the fiance now. Trevor Mason. He's a good guy. Arrested last year for statutory rape. I interviewed him. Claimed it was all a big mistake. <laughs> and that, Mira, is why I never trust myself to judge character. Oh, excuse me. Thank you. Who knows? Maybe this time it's true love. Good to see you're keeping in touch with the kids. She wants me to direct her next video. Yeah, great. Looks like she needs all the help she can get. If I don't do it, somebody else will. I know. Well, that's much better. Who screwed up? I'm sorry. It was my fault. <laughs> Seven years clean, you think I'd be a little bit less obsessed with alcohol. <laughs> you keep up the good work. It's Jenny, right? Yeah. I don't suppose you're looking for a job. From Wisconsin? Yeah, a little town south of Green Bay. <laughs> well, this must be a switch for you. Yeah. This job can be very challenging. Sloane is a very particular woman. I'll do my best to please her. Oh, it's me you gotta please. I work for Sloane, you work for me. Got it? Okay. It's not gonna be glamorous. Disappointed? I'm just happy to have the job. <laughs> now this is our office. And this is Sloane's. Wow. If you have to come in here for any reason, don't linger. Sloane's very private. No problem. You know, I'm a huge fan of hers. Her first album, Slow Burn, really affected me. Is that why you took the job? Oh, no. Wait, who isn't a fan of hers? I'm here to help you. 
Well, your job, actually all our jobs, is to take care of Sloane. You should never annoy, pester, suggest, or request anything from her. In a perfect world, you would never even talk to Sloane. I understand. What's the problem? Jay, I like the song, but what's with the vocal effects? A little heavy. Not for a phone call from Bulgaria. Why don't you guys give us a minute? All right. Thanks. Hello, my little man. Talk to me, Sloan. I'm all ears. That Android effect is way too AM radio. It sucks. It's the happening sound right now. So it still sucks. Hey, George, how you doing, my little boy? You know, slow burn, that was like my favorite jam back in the fifth grade. I mean, you had Tear to Tear, Navajo Nights, Dreamkeeper. I mean, come on, I grew up with your music, Sloan. Gee, thanks. But the reason I'm running this label now, because the last guy, he was stuck in a time warp. We've got to bring you up to date, sweetheart. Kids today, they want now music, not then music. Well, if now music means Trust it's me, rather... Sloan, I'm here for you. Now, I booked you to premiere your soon-to-be number one hit single on Divas. That's in two weeks. And VH1's been promoting it like it was the second coming. The song is not done, and I hate doing those friggin' shows. Trust me, Sloan, you'd hate doing Atlantic City a lot more. But Ruby, Ru Ruby, she has to have fresh papaya every day, especially when she's recording. All right, then. Try the Namaste Bistro. They have a yummy tofu lasagna. Uh-huh. Yeah, I don't eat meat either, Trevor. Okay, I will tell her you called. You're welcome, Trevor. Bye. Jenny. Yeah? Getting chummy with Sloane's boyfriend is a great way of getting yourself unemployed fast. I'm, I'm sorry, I just, you were on the other line, so I That's just... Right. this time. But from now on, let me handle the personal calls, okay? Hello? This is she. What's wrong with it? Great. Uh-huh. No, you know what? Just put in the new battery, and I'll take care of the rest of it later. Yeah, I'll see you tonight at 6. Jenny, I have to uh, leave here early tonight. I need you to stay. That's fine. Call me on myself if you have any questions. 
Good luck with the car. Thanks. from Sloan McBride's house. If you don't want me to do it, I won't do it. I never said that. Why are you upset? Well, I just don't know why you want to work with some third-rate Britney knockoff. <laughs> Look, it's his job. If it makes you uncomfortable, I'll walk away. You said I'm uncomfortable. We're gonna get married. One thing about commitment is learning to bend. If you want me to next the job, I will. I love it when you get all Oprah on me. Come on, what's really going on? It's not you. Just that crap Gavin said, huh? Yeah, if I don't cook up some miracle single in the next two weeks that sells a billion records, he's gonna drop me. That's not gonna happen. I'm a 40-year-old woman in the music business. It's like being 90 in civilian years. I don't know if I can do it. Can't see it, can you? You really have no idea how good you are. I am a lot of things, Trev, but I am not at all sure that good is one of them. But it's nice to hear. Mm, do the stupid job. I'll stop acting like a jealous schoolgirl. Oh, good morning. I'm sorry, I, I didn't know you were in here. Morning. Jenny. Right, Jenny. Uh, do you know if Diane picked up George's steak? I picked it up. I also booked your hairstylist for the pediatric AIDS benefit, and I sent a wedding gift to your publicist. And where's Diane? Diane has, um... Diane has what? Diane has car trouble. Again? Okay. I am out of here. I love you. She'll be here soon. Please don't tell her I said anything. I have taken care of everything for this morning, and I really don't want her to get in trouble. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Seems like you're giving Diane some well-needed relief. Well, back in Wisconsin, we just help each other out. Is that where you're from? Yes, ma'am. Do you know anyone from there? No. What were you thinking? You went into my Rolodex, you took notes off of my desk? I was just trying to help. What did I tell you when you started, Jenny? I work for Sloan, you work for me. I, I'm sorry, I'm so, I, I, I was just trying to show you that I'm capable of more. More what? The next rung on the ladder is my job, Jenny, or hadn't you noticed? Oh, no, no, I would never, ever try It's really to... funny, I can't tell if you're incredibly naive or a little bit of a snake. And unfortunately, I don't have time to figure it out. You can stay to the end of the week, but then you should move on.
latest remix from DJ Raven, everyone's favorite Sloan McBride jam, Slow Burn. Oh, thank God. Uh, what happened? Well, my mechanic swore it would run till Friday, and uh, the reception up here is so bad I can't even call AAA. Huh. Well, you need a ride? Yeah, yeah, that would, that would be great, thanks. Turn up at some point. This is so not like Diane. She's not pissed at me, is she? I'm sure that's not it. Well, you know, I can't wait for any more. You're gonna have to step up for me. Think you can handle it? Yes. I know I can. Hello? Hi, yes, I work for Miss McBride. How can I help you? She's supposed to be here. Actually, uh, we were a little concerned. She's not in some kind of trouble. And there was no sign of her, just her car. Okay, um, please let us know if there's anything else. Of course, we'll let you know as soon as we hear from her. That was the police. Caltrans found her car just abandoned not too far from here. Would you get Trevor on the phone for me, please? Yeah. Well, I think I'm gonna take off slow. Okay. Call me if you need anything, okay? Yeah, thanks, Jay. All right, Jay. Take it easy. Look, I'm sure there's an explanation for all this. Diane is probably implementing a very well-organized form of physical torture on her mechanic. I just have a bad feeling about this. This tea's super calming. Thanks. My mother was kind of an amateur homeopath when I was growing up. In Wisconsin? Yeah, we were definitely the only vegans on the block. 
No, I just, I shouldn't, I should never have kept Diane so late. I, I think I work her too no, hard. don't go there. Miss McBride, can I get you anything else? Anything at all? No, thanks, Jenny. I'm gonna go call some of Diane's friends, see if they've heard anything. I'll be in the office if you need me. Okay. Well, she's on the ball. Yeah, she's a sweet girl. how fabulous it looked on Giselle. This outfit is retarded. It's sexy, Sloan. Sex sells. And, uh, <laughs> by the way, so do girlish figures. And what the hell is that supposed to mean? Well, you know, maybe the outfit isn't the problem. for who I truly am, don't you, George? <sighs> By the way, I've decided to go on one of those liquid diets. What's that Chinese thing that everybody's doing to lose after baby weight? Uh, Kui Che powder? Right. Let's do that. No problem. But for the record, I think that Gavin was really out of line. Oh, forget it. I mean, men want all women to look like prepubescent girls. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know everyone's not like that. Uh, by the way, you got a phone call. Diane? No, Trevor called. He said he has to work late with Tara tonight. But he'll try to call you later. There will come a time. There will be a day. There will come a time. Tell her it's important. 
look, between you and me, she hasn't really been returning calls. She's, uh, she's been kind of upset lately. Yeah. Anyway, I am taking down your message right now. Sloan, call your publicist. <laughs> okay. Hello? <laughs> when I was left alone with fear and I I thought my world was shattered I didn't have one thing that mattered You took my heart and broke it Didn't think I could stand the pain You knew the truth and spoke it When the world drove me insane You gave it all to me When I had nowhere to turn You lit a fire Wow, all you need is a spotlight. Oh god. Um, I'm so, so embarrassed. I'm sorry. Um, I was just dropping this package off for Sloan and I just saw the mic and... Uh... Don't apologize. <sighs> Everybody does that when they think no one's looking. <laughs> but you were looking. I still am. <laughs> Actually, we haven't officially met. I'm Jay Derensburg. I know. I know every song you've ever written for Sloan. <laughs> well, it's uh, nice to meet you, officially. You too. I was beginning to think you didn't like me or something. Oh, no. I uh, guess I'm a little shy. And I get, uh, I get so wrapped up in my work. <laughs> yeah. Um, look, I was just about to grab some food. Maybe you'd like to join me? I'd love to. <laughs> but, um, I'm exhausted. Rain check? Anytime. Cool. Oh, thank you. Hi. Jenny, have you seen my brown suede jacket anywhere? Sorry, Trevor, I haven't. Oh, man. Maybe it's in your car. No, I just checked. I know I left it around here somewhere. Ugh, I hate it when that happens. Was it really expensive or something? No, it was a gift from Sloan. She's going to kill me. I'll look for it. Don't worry, it'll turn up. Okay. Last time I wore it was. Good time? Uh huh. But now what you're thinking. Hop in.
scooter over. Get her scooter over. Okay, cut. Cut way back. Let's get Tara dry. My butt's booming. Sweetheart, one more take and then we'll do the flying shots, okay? You're gonna love it. I promise you. Did you check the safety harnesses? Mm. You sure? Did you remember last time? Yeah, I remember. I got them. Hey! When were you going to call Trevor? Do I know you? You said you would drive me to the clinic and put up half the cash. I don't, have the slightest, I don't have the slightest idea what she's talking about. Okay, I don't know how you got in here, but you gotta get your ass back out right now. <laughs> Can I get a hand here, people? Uh, miss. I thought you'd be a scumbag. I guess I was right. Miss, you need to leave. Come on. Is this someone's idea of a joke? Huh? Okay, uh, back to one. Nothing to see here. Let's go. Let's go. Put the towels down. Let's go. So you sure you did everything I told you to do? Girlfriend, it was so money. Everybody was watching. They looked at him like it was some cockroach. <laughs> hey, you got it or what? And the rest of the money? Take this jacket. This isn't what we talked about. I want cash. Get out! Don't use it all in one place. Showed up at the set and just started screaming at Really? Me. Yeah. What about the jacket? I don't know how that happened. So she just stole it so she could bring it back to Piss Alley so she could die in style. Not likely. You don't believe that, do you, Sloan? Trev, it wouldn't be the first time you've gotten involved with jailbait. Oh, that has nothing to do with what's going it on. It has everything to do with what's going on. They were both children. Look, one night after an insane party with a girl who looked 30, I didn't know she was underage. <laughs> I'm not going to defend myself to you, Sloan. Either you believe me, or you don't. Trev, I saw the photos, OK? She was blonde and lanky and teenage. Just your type. I guess old stereotypes die hard, huh, Sloan?
Excuse me, Miss McBride? Yeah. What? Is there anything I can do? Anything I can get you? No, I'm okay. By the way, to Trevor. He didn't call. Hmm. Any word from Diane? I'm sorry. <sighs> Miss McBride? Jesus, call me Sloan. I just wanted to say what happened with your fiance. I mean, you're just a beautiful, amazing, talented woman, and I just don't think that he was. I know. He seemed like the wrong guy. Ah! But at night, when. When we were alone, he, he made me feel so safe. I think I'm gonna go take a bath. I made you an extra shake. It's in the fridge. Something to live for. Come on, George. <coughs> Call me if you need anything. Thank you. Oh my god, I feel so fuzzy. <laughs> I'm gonna be a wreck tomorrow. <laughs> Sloan is gonna flip when she finds out I got her innocent new assistant drunk. I'm not all that innocent. Besides, we can have a tiny secret between us, can't we? We sure can. <laughs> Believe me, the last thing I wanna do is get Sloan more upset. Such bad timing for this whole Trevor thing. Yeah, Mira was right. I'm just really worried about her. She started smoking again. She... What? What, did something else happen? She's just depressed. She wanted a tranquilizer or Xenin or something. Xanax? Yeah, that's it. I didn't have one, of course, but it, it still worried me. <sighs> it's not a good sign. Am I speaking out of turn? Because I feel like I'm breaking a confidence. Oh, no, no. I, actually, I think she's damn lucky to have someone like you in her life right now. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my um, God. <laughs> I am so sorry about your blouse. <laughs> I am such a goof. This line's totally gone to my head. Um, can I, uh, can I get you, like, a t-shirt or, or, or something? I should really go. Shame up for a week and I'm still gaining. I'm gonna have to paint Goodyear on my ass. I heard it takes a while, then it just kicks in all at once. Besides, I think you look great. Thanks. Mm. I'm just nervous about this interview today. Why would you be? Well, a long time ago I told Mira something strictly off the record and she mentioned it on the air. So I called her executive producer. And since I had briefly dated the head of the network, I called him too. I don't blame you. Some things are private. You'd think. But since then, she's practically boycotted me. Some people never completely forgive. Or forget. Thanks. Should we right here up? Let's get Is it looking, I think?
Papaya. Gee, thanks. All right, 20 minutes to airtime, folks. What's wrong with you? That obnoxious PA that brought the fruit? I feel like I've seen him somewhere before. Maybe in one of your past lives. Welcome, Sloane McBride. I am so glad to have you back on the show. Really? <laughs> Do you take seminars in BS or does it just come naturally? Well, let's just talk about your upcoming show. Let's. Will you be performing your old songs or are you going to debut some new material? Oh, sure. I'm going to be premiering my new AM Radio Ready single. <laughs> I'm, I'm just so... Mira, I'm really tired of singing the old stuff. You know, I mean, I can't even tell you what it's like to try to belt out those old songs over and over and over and over again. It's like, Jesus, it's hot in here. I don't know how you do it. But I think, um, what was I saying? What was I saying? Oh, right. I think that, uh, people, they don't, they don't want you to move on. They don't want... They don't want you to try to be somebody, you know? Sloan? Sloan, are you okay? <laughs> I... God, this is nice. I like this material. Feels good on your ass. <sighs> yes, yes, I see it. Feels good on your ass. <laughs> wow, f*** me, man. Rock on, Mira. Oh, my God. She's going to slaughter me. That was Sloan McBride during a live interview this very afternoon. McBride spent three months in rehab several years ago claiming to have got the monkey off her back. However, after seeing her behavior today, well, all I can say is shame on you, Sloan McBride. <sighs> in other news, thousands I don't know how it happened, Gavin. I don't know. I mean, you're the record executive. You should, you should stop asking me questions and do some damage control. Somebody must have slipped me something. I, I don't know who. <sighs> Would you stop? Yeah. Oh my God. Oh my God. There was this. There was a. Um. There was a PA. There was this obnoxious PA. PA about the fruit. Well, who else could it have been? I feel like I've seen him somewhere before. No, you have got to find that guy that delivered the fruit plate before the interview. I think he might have drunk my papaya. You should have seen it. Stone to the gills on prime time. <laughs> it was so genius. It won't be long now, Mama. It won't be long. No such thing as bad publicity. You know, that's not comforting right now. I humiliated myself on national television last night. Look, I've got to call Mira. She's having a field day with this. Look, I'm going to put some reverse spin on this, Sloan. Reverse spin my ass. Just take it easy, Sloan. You guys, the cops are here. <sighs> They're probably here to arrest me for murdering my career. Can you go see what they want, Jenny? Yeah. No. I'll handle this. I'm beginning to feel like freaking Job here. They're probably just here to ask some questions about Trevor. As if it isn't enough that that whole thing was on every front page in the country. I've just had enough of people invading my private life. 
mean, can't they call first? I'm sorry, Sloan. It's about Diane. I'm afraid we found her. Looks like Miss Fraley had attempted to hitch a ride home. Unfortunately, whoever picked her up robbed her and killed her. Dumped her body off Mulholland. I'm very sorry. We were lucky to find her at all. I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm having trouble believing these lyrics right now. I saw that, Gavin. Excuse me, saw what? I saw that face you just made, Jay. I didn't make a face, Sloan. Don't lie to me. It really wasn't a face. <laughs> it, it, it was a look. Oh, he rolled his eyes, Jay. I do not need to be treated this way, especially right now. No one's treating you any way, I swear, Sloan. No, of course not. I'm just some crazy bitch, right? I'm just some, like, neurotic, pain-in-the-ass diva who's just making stuff up. It wasn't anything like that, okay? All right, Jay. Let's just do another take, okay? Thank you. If that's all, I'm gonna take off now. Jenny? Yeah? Do you think I'm a bad person? Is that why all this is happening? I mean, Diane is dead and Trevor is gone. And the whole world thinks I'm on drugs. Sometimes I feel, sometimes I feel like, like I really am going crazy. Trauma will do that to you, Sloan. It makes you feel terrible things. Well, why don't you take the weekend off? I'm sure Gavin and Jay will understand. The show is in less than a week and I gotta do the vocal arrangement. Well, we'll take a day then. An ounce of prevention. Maybe just a day. I have something for you. For the pain. It's aspirin. Can I? Thank you. And after that fiasco, Bobby found himself bankrupt, homeless, friendless, and strung out on a long list of pharmaceuticals. His career was over. After my 15th rehab, I realised that something had gone terribly wrong in my life. My wife had left me, my kids, I mean, they even burned my CDs. My record executive wouldn't return my calls. Suddenly, my whole existence went swirling down the crapper. Do you have a cigarette?
You want to what? Sloan, now's not the time. I need you focused right now. Losing another assistant is not going to help. <sighs> Worried about my mental state, Gavin? How novel. Well, let's just say, neither one of us needs another nationally televised disaster. You're not getting it. This crap started happening when Jenny arrived. Trevor, the Mira interview, Diane. Oh, and you think she killed Diane? Sloan, the other day you thought the papaya PA dosed you. Guess who put that idea into my head? Let me get this straight. You're, you're basing this entire theory on, on what? A drawing of a dog? A twisted drawing of my dog. Hey, I'm not so crazy about George myself. It doesn't make me a murderer. Remember how we hired her? You remember my birthday party? Diane just happens to misplace some champagne, and Jenny just happens to know where it is. Diane needs an assistant. Jenny just happens to be available. That would make her lucky, not evil. What could she possibly want, Sloan? At first, I thought she just wanted to break into the business, you know, have access to the right people. And if I recall, you did a thing or two when you were starting out. Now I'm beginning to think it's something more personal, and I cannot put my finger on what? Mm, Sloan, tell you what. I'm gonna send over my shiatsu girl. Damn it, you stop patronizing me! I am not losing it. Hi. It's Sloan. I need a really big favor. <sighs> Forgive me for saying so, but you look like crap. <laughs> Though I think I might know why. Cosmopolitan, please. Yes, ma'am. I was really surprised that you called me of all people. <clears throat> well, weirdly, I felt that you were the only person that I could trust. Besides, I owe you an apology for that crap I pulled with your producers. No kidding. I did six weeks of spring break coverage over that. that was stupid. Lucky for you, I can't resist a bit of celebrity intrigue. I had my staff do some legwork. That's a very interesting girl you have there. Thank you. Where'd she say she was wrong? Wisconsin. <laughs> She's not. Unless it's another name for Simi Valley. <laughs> Go on. She's from a little white trash town called Riverton. But apparently she didn't hang out there for very long. Ended up in reform schools, couple stints in county jail. Jail? This girl's been in and out of foster homes and institutions since her mother's death. When was that? Almost 17 years ago. See, Mom was from Wisconsin, not Jenny. She came to LA to be a singer. Must have had some tough breaks. She shot herself when Jenny was just a kid. Oh, one more thing. Crane was not her real name. It's Wile. She changed it a couple years ago. And her mother's first name? Carla. Carla Weil.
blacksmith. You're fired. What? what? Why? I think we both know Jenny. Jenny Wilde. Oh, my God. I was afraid if you knew who I was, you never would have hired me. Obviously. I just really wanted a chance. Cut the girl next door crap. It's getting old. You've got an ax to grind with me. I know that now. You, you think I blame you for what happened to my mother? Is that what you're saying? Just leave. Please. I would never, ever do something like that. How could you think such a terrible thing about me? Well, what about the weight gaining powder underneath the sink? What weight gaining powder? God knows what else you put in the shakes. And the, the picture that you drew of George with the fangs. Oh, oh. I was just goofing, Sloan. I draw mustaches on boat covers. And besides, I, I never really thought you'd go through my drawer. I'm sorry, there's just too much at stake. Hurt does terrible things to people, Sloan. It's done awful things to you. You're wrong about me. You'll see that later. how she can do stuff like this. Jenny, what are you talking about? Someone's gonna fire you. What? I heard her on the phone this morning with Gavin saying you're trying to sabotage the album. He's already calling around looking for a replacement. You know anything about it? You know anything about knowing anyone who does? No? No. I hear you asking about Libby. Yeah. What's it worth to you? 200? Three. Depends on what you have to say. I have had it with her. I've been dreading telling you this. Look, I'm going over there before this gets any more out of hand. A couple of days before Libby died, she got hired to do this weird gig where she had to go yell at some dude. You said you would drive me to the clinic and put up half the cash. Who hired her? What do you look like? Not he, she. She just drove right up here in this old beat up car. I think it was gold. It has some funky stickers on the back though. Super 70s style. Hi, Jay. It's me. Can you, um, call me as soon as you get this? I had something to... What the hell? G call me. Who is it? It was me and Sloan. It's Jay. Jay, that's so weird. I was just leaving you a message. Come on in. Jay, I'm so glad you're here. Can I come in? Of course. She is not coming in my house. <sighs> come on, Jay, Sloan. I don't know what she's told you, but she's Enough! not- Enough! Open the door, bitch! <sighs> Very impolite to leave your friends out in the cold, Sloan. What the hell is going Shut on? Shut up before I shoot your pathetic ass! Jenny. Shut up. Move it, fat ass. Come here, baby. Good boy, George. 
beat you at your own game, Sloan. Even George likes me better than you. Vaughn Sloan. Jenny, what, what are you doing? Let's just say I'm uh, working out some unresolved childhood issues. Jay, this is Jenny Weil. This is Carla's daughter. She's Carla's, but- You remember Carla, don't you? She loved you, she trusted you, and you betrayed her, you stupid pig. You don't understand. I loved your mother. I, I didn't, how did this happen? Why I was calling you, I was trying to tell Shut up! It's my turn to talk! I'm gonna tell you kids a story before I put your asses to bed. Once upon a time, there was this young woman from Wisconsin who came to Los Angeles to make it as a singer. She suffered the usual slings and arrows until one day, she met a dashing young songwriter who promised her the world. And his name was Jay Darrensburg. But it didn't end up happily ever after, did it, Jay? You don't understand. Guess what? Who cares? No! Oh. Uh, uh, uh. Well, time for the main act. Get up! Bitch. Ah, the oh so holy triple platinum Sloan McBride classic. What delicious irony. song for mom, didn't he? A song to her, for her, and about her. Wasn't it slow? But who got in her way? Huh? I knew I wanted that song from the moment I heard it. Jay needed the money, and so I paid him. Everything you have, you stole from my mother. You stole from me. I was ambitious, but I did not kill your mother. You are the killer. You have no idea what you've just done. The beauty of your untimely death, Sloan, is that you're gonna do it all by yourself. Everyone thinks you're using again, so the rest is simple. Your old buddy Jay comes by to drag your ass to rehab and in your paranoid, inebriated state, you shot him. <sighs> Overwrought, you downed an entire bottle of barbiturates. Tabloids will lap it up. Bonafide, drug-induced, all-star murder suicide. Do it, Sloan! Look on the bright side. Your album sales will go through the roof. Take them, slut! Your mother couldn't do it. Shut up! My mother was better than you! Better singer, without a doubt. A better person, I wouldn't be surprised. 
but more sure of who she was and what she wanted, I don't think so. Your mother was afraid. Jay booked the studio to record the song, and she didn't even show up. Jay loved your mother. And that man you killed tonight, Jay. He was your father. No! Damn fine bitch. the desk. No one left to help you now, Sloane. Just you and me. You got about three seconds before you're just another dead celebrity. I'm here with Sloane McBride, whose new album has been number one for 15 weeks. So, Sloane, I guess you're putting this whole Jenny Weil incident behind you? I'm trying, honey, believe me. What a nightmare. Tell me, what kind of effect has this stuff had on your life? Well, it showed me how lucky I am to do what I love. And it reminded me to appreciate certain things that I've always taken for granted. and it gave me a much needed dose of humility. Well, let's take a look at how all of this humility has paid off. The number one requested video in the nation, Stand Down. (laughs) 
This heart can now feel what this heart could never feel. And these eyes can now see what these eyes could never see. And I can see. See what's true, I can see